Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Hope you're having a great day today. And welcome back to another History Teacher X video. All right, you all made sure to let me know that Blue Jay uploaded again. And this video is called The Worst Pirates You've Ever Heard Of. All right, I love pirate history. I love to talk about it in my classes. And there's probably a lot of misconceptions you have about pirates. So we'll see in this video if I can find some good opportunities to teach along the way. All right, this video is gonna be linked down below. Make sure you're supporting Blue Jay. Also, if you're watching this about the time that I uploaded it, we are right in the middle of historical March madness in the community. So I'll put a link down below to the voting. You don't have to sign up or do anything. Just click on who you think should advance. All right, let's get started. All right, my favorite pirate is Sir Francis Drake. I wonder if he gets dropped in there, but he was actually a good pirate. He was the most successful pirate in history. So he probably shouldn't be in a video of worst pirates, but look up uh, Drake if you've never heard of him. Height of the Morn, the sun. This video is sponsored by World of Warships. At the height of the morn, the sun pierced its cloudy prison to cast its radiant gaze upon Captain Johnny P. Ritt, the scourge of the seven seas. Squinting through the brilliance of molten gold rays, the young pirate swaggered along the length of his schooner, every second step proclaimed by the resonating clunk of his peg leg on weathered timbers. <laughs> by the way, we all need to appreciate how Blue Jays become like so professional when it comes to the quality it started you know very low budget and as, as as all channels start but now it's like high production values it's right up there now with oversimplified and all that stuff plus the incredible writing it gets better and better and i think some of the voice acting some of the best out there as well splashing sea sent sparkling salty spray showering the sun-soaked smiling sailor accenting his striking pose like a badge of valiance at the bow of his ship the aspiring pirate's eyes locked into his approaching prey the prized galleon of the Spanish treasure fleet and a soon to be first big score as captain of the flintlock fiends. With a wave of his hand, these poor raps oh, galleons yeah. would bear witness to the wrath and judgment of his schooner's payload. All that was left to invoke his trial by iron and flame was one word. While the adventurous tales of Bartholomew Roberts, Francis Drake, and Blackbeard paint Black a Bart tantalizing Francis. picture hey, of Drake. Black Blunder. There he is. Drake, the Queen's Pirates, as he was called. He's literally employed by the British crown to plunder uh, Spanish treasure ships. So this was the era, okay? It starts around 15th into the 1600s. It goes on, obviously, much longer, where Spain was taking buttloads. Okay, of of uh, uh, gold, silver, especially silver, silver, the first world currency, really um, out of the Americas. And it was used to uh, a lot of that went back to the crown. I think a fifth, I believe, of all acquisitions went back to the Spanish crown. A lot of it going to Asia. It's going in different directions. So you would plunder those. And those ships are very vulnerable out there, uh, out in the middle of the ocean. And the techniques of guys like Drake were able to uh, 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 routinely be able to uh, cap or to basically incapacitate ships and take all that money. They put bounty on his head of millions of dollars in today's money for Drake there, the Queen's pirate. They call them privateers back then if you worked for a, uh, a, a government. And multiple countries were doing it. A lot of countries were doing it. During booty on the high seas, the gods of statistics and reality are always there to remind us that pirate life was much more likely to be as successful and abrupt as our little friend Johnny's here. As for every pirate who succeeded in finding riches, there were dozens more who ended up as pathetic, wretched, miserable failures sometimes in many pieces. That's right, we're talking piracy of the seafaring variety. <laughs> so cock your flintlocks and chase some parrot They're so flocks, protective because today, of we're gonna talk about the worst pirates you've never heard of. Now, I should say, there was a lot of, especially crappy pirates, um, later in the pirate era, if you want to call it that. So the first pirates, kind of like I was talking about with Drake, they were employed by governments like, and they got all that funding. And obviously they had to be very skilled and because literally you had a boss. Well, eventually over time, uh, because piracy was such a big deal and so harmful to these countries and could cause wars and escalate conflicts, um, countries would, you know, agree to stop the privateering, like the financial funding of, of of pirates, right? So for a lot of those privateers or people that wanted to be one, once the privateering was officially over, piracy is still very uh, much a, um, a, a, a potentially very uh, profitable type of thing, right? So people just go out and start doing piracy on their own. That's the pirates that you probably, uh, you might be thinking of in movies and stuff that don't work for an outside government. They do it for themselves and their crew and all that. And I could see at that era, there are probably a lot of crappy pirates <laughs> that, you know, before weren't getting hired by people. But I want to hear some good stories of some stuff. So there's a little bit of your uh, background of pirate history. 
there, buddy. What you got there? A pirate ship? Oh, wow. Are those cannons? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be the most dangerous pirate on the seven seas. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me hear your best yarg. Yarg! Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, good luck. <laughs> dreams of <laughs> sailing today. a cannon-packed pirate ship are fun and all, but it's not as fun as crushing those dreams in World of Warships. World of Warships <laughs> is a free to- All right, we'll go to the Warships code so y'all can, uh, if you want to play some World of Warships, we can get the, uh, get the code for you. But yeah, you know, you still hear about piracy and like the Indian Ocean. You know, that's happening there and it could still, you know, be very problematic. There's an interesting deep history about what has kind of led to some of that modern piracy. A lot of it goes back to um, like Scramble for Africa imperialism and maybe we can cover that another time. Sponsoring the video. It's 1717, the golden. By the way, was there a code? I want to make sure. Okay, code Bravo. Code Bravo. Team Battles. Thank you, World of Warships, for sponsoring the video. It's 1717, the golden age of piracy, and Major Steed Bonnet set sail for the first time as a pirate captain. And also for the first time ever. There are numerous ways one could find themselves pirating during the Golden Age. Many were poor sailors seized by dreams of riches and freedom. Others were normal sailors seized by pirates for their riches and freedom. <laughs> and some were seized by the Royal Navy before seizing command to seize riches and freedom. <laughs> Bonnet, on the other well, hand, think about it. It's not. It's very expensive to get a ship and a crew and to be able to the financing and all that to actually have a livelihood doing that. Can't just be for anybody unlike most others in that he did not come from mediocrity, but rather aristocracy. Seed Bonnet grew up in Barbados on a wealthy estate of over 400 acres of sugarcane fields, which he inherited at the young age of six after his parents passed away. Now, you might think growing up on a farm would build this sort of rugged and... Uh, yeah, so era of colonialism here. Uh, did you guys know that the highest percentage of African slaves that went to the Americas went to the Caribbean? Uh, what was going on there? Well, it's two big reasons. One, had the climate for sugar production, the most profitable of all of the cash crops that were developed uh, in this era, which can only be um, really uh, farmed and uh, cultivated in specific tropical type of climates there. Also, there's no local force workforce there because nearly 100% of Native Caribbeans died of disease during this era. Just six after his parents passed away. Now, you might think growing up on a farm would build the sort of rugged and handy character necessary for a swashbuckling uh, wealthy piracy. aristocrat. But <laughs> this is the 1600s. Yeah. Uh, okay, slaves. I know this looks bad. Yeah, 94 African slaves doesn't really scream tolerant. <gasps> no, that's not fair. That'd be very expensive to have that many I slaves. have three whites as well. A social item society. Maybe some Charmer indentured of arts. Major Steed Bonnet was known to be a proper gentleman. But don't let that major deceive you. He got that from the Barbadian militia, which was essentially just a bunch of land owners who hunted down runaway slaves uh, like i said with his wife and four kids he was all set to cruise the lazy river to run away on the island, good huh? life but all that would change one fateful day when he decided to take a detour it's eight in the morning ah oh, that can't be right the <laughs> life-sucking vampires would be back in their coffins by now yes what? instead here you are sucking down madeira wine like it's the first job you've ever had well mary i just thought it was about time someone did some sucking in this house <gasps> And it's pronounced Madeira. Oh, go down to the harbor if you want to gargle the Spanish so much. <laughs> Portuguese, Mary. It's Portuguese from the subtropical archipelago of Madeira, which, spoiler alert, is in the name. Madeira. If you put half as much thought into this household as you do the bottom Portuguese. of a bottle. Oh, here we go. Then Mr. Peppers would still be alive. How was I who? supposed to know the dog couldn't tuck and roll? Because who launches a dog 60 feet in the air with a sugarcane trebuchet? He had a dream. Mary. What? A cherished aspiration or ambition. I, I know what a dream is. Then why'd you ask? Mr. Peppers died? Because I wasn't sure if I just heard the most ridiculous five-word <laughs> oh, no. sentence in my Again. life since I said, yes, I will marry you. Oh, that's just, you're a five-word sentence. Something, something. George, I swear to God, if you touch my wine glass, I will force feed you rose thorns. Sorry, oh. sir. Gosh. I also need you to go pick some rose thorns. Of course, sir. In a very bomb. All right. All right. So how many of you have basically had that conversation? Does that look does that look like the dinner conversations that uh, were going on at your your dinner table growing up? I sure hope not. <laughs> All right. This guy. Okay. This guy seems 
I don't know. I don't know what kind of pirate he's really going to be. Here's in Blue Jay approved midlife crisis, Bonnet decided to spontaneously abandon his life to become a pirate. Many sources claim it was because he was tired of his nagging wife's constant yapping. Others speculate <laughs> it was like, due to the I hate my wife so much. I'm going to leave my cushy aristra uh, aristocratic position to go and do the worst job there basically is. Go out on a ship and probably die and get scurvy and get into conflicts where I'm probably going to die that way. Uh, wow, this marriage must have been awful. This is this <laughs> this is the equivalent of of dad going out for cigarettes and not going back. You know, like in the 1600s, <laughs> you go and become a pirate. <laughs> Stress from having lost a child, and some theorize that the avid bookworm was captivated with wonderlust of the pirate life from the novels of the time. But whatever the reason, I think it was pretty clear that our little steed had a bee in his bonnet per se. So despite having literally no seafaring experience, he set off to kickstart his new career on the high it's seas. It's not something you can just Typically show up and the first do. thing every new pirate had to do was steal a ship. But that sounded like a lot of poor people worked to steed, so he just bought one instead. Okay. After getting the you other essentials like rich. cannons, ammunition, and a private library in his personal I if he's owning a, a plantation in Barbados and with 90 cents something slaves, he's at the one he's at the one percent. By the way, if you have that kind of uh, those kind of assets, all he had to do was wrangle himself up a crew. Hello, good sir. Uh, uh, you seem to be the rather swashbuckly money. sort. You're going to need uh, some experienced people. Uh, how would you like to join me? Pirate crew, Yarg. Pirate? What, because I have a parrot? That's kind of fucked up, man. What? It can talk? <laughs> no, no. By the way, anyone know anything about the parrot thing? I know of no historical context of a parrot thing. Was that just theatrical? Okay. It just knows that one phrase. That's kind of unsettling. What, is your monumental ego threatened by the mere idea that something you see as just an animal could possibly be more intelligent than you? Or are you just surprised by the fact that someone told you no what for the bias. first time in your privileged life? Or perhaps is this reaction just an outlet for how unsettled you are your own life circumstances as a whole, spanning from the obvious contention plaguing your marriage to the palpable insecurities encompassing your fostered this. resentment at the predetermined trajectory of your affluent life? Okay, maybe two. Brock? <laughs> After gathering a crew, Bonnet kept up his tradition of breaking pirate tradition by paying what? them a salary from his own fortune, as opposed to the norm of just splitting shares of plunder. With all his boxes Yeah, it checked, seems like with that then, it's like, would they be as motivated? Because they already got the check, right? They already got the check. Otherwise, they'd be very motivated to perform well in the actual seizing of other ships. So I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be good. Y you're going to need that commission, but okay. Still seems like there's a guy just want to get away from his wife. <laughs> the gentleman pirate snuck out of his home, but out he of needs the like island, a good first and out mate. of a family that he would never see save. again. Adjusting to the pirate life aboard the Revenge would have been rather interesting for Bonnet. Instead of his usual lavish courses of veal, caviar, and gummy worms, which I only... A popular opinion. I didn't like Black Flag. It was one of my least, maybe my least favorite Assassin's Creed. One, one of them. I have a tier video on my gaming channel, Mr. Terry Gaming. Look it up. History teacher ranks... Assassin's Creed games or whatever it's called. I know. Sorry. Assume are staples of every wealthy man's diet. He would have had to settle for slabs oh, of salted gross. meat, dry biscuits, and whatever other critters they could scrounge up whilst plundering booty. You know what? Something's <laughs> really neat that I learned about in I learned about this in college that there was a thriving ice trade. Yes, like 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 transoceanic ice trade, where they could actually ship ice. And I remember that being a topic brought up and I, I forget what class I was in, what course that even was. We were doing like picking topics for research projects. I ended up picking something else, but I remember somebody was going to do that, um, had heard about that. And I never learned how that worked, like refrigeration, essentially, because like you see here, salting your meat, that was how you preserved meat in old times. Um, you did that. You just buried it in salt. But there was actually an ice trade. I was like, I didn't melt or something. Um, I never looked into the specifics of that. Let me see if there's some papers out there. Salted meat, dry biscuits, and whatever other critters they can scrounge up whilst plundering booty. <laughs> oh, you have something how that cute. Can I think I'm going to call you Donatello, which isn't a reference for anything yet. No, Wait, it's what? cute. I think I'm going to call you Donatello, which isn't a reference for anything yet. No, it's not. <laughs> Who's your That's favorite good, turtle? I think he's Who's more of a turtle? bow staff guy. The pirates started their hunt around the east <laughs> the coast, where they staff, found yeah. some success at first, capturing a handful of ships without a fight and releasing them after they were debootified. Except for the Barbadian ones, which, in order to keep word of his activities from reaching home, he burned to the ground. After you plundered them, right? <laughs> 
Even with a profitable start, Bonnet's inexperience really started to shine in these encounters, and the crew began to lose what oh, he was an assassin they had for the in, gentleman in that pirate. But hopefully, that. all that was about to change as they spotted a massive Spanish merchant ship this, on the This horizon. was my thing, by the way, because I know some of you are like typing. How does he not like Black Flag? Good pirate game, but not great for Assassin's Creed. Is that fair? Can we compromise there? And then race interceptor with their Jolly Roger raised high. This is it, Peter. The big score. The, the Set the blowy bones. sheets to max and let's get this booty, yarg. Blowy sheet. Full sail. The men say full sail. Uh, sorry, and these men pay your salary? Blowy sheets to max, men! <laughs> Davy Jones, that's Blowy no merchant sheets. vessel. It's be a Spanish man of war. <laughs> I mean, Peter, come on. We've all dabbled in red light districts. Oh. What? <laughs> not a that's man, the name of of the man of war. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm not one to judge, but if you're into being eaten, just don't do it on company time. No, not man of war, man of war. <gasps> Cortez himself, he's here. What? How did you get conquistador? The pirates. Those fifteen twenties back then. Yeah, man of war is the big, uh, the big powerful ships they called man o war. We realized they weren't facing a merchant vessel packed with luscious amounts of shiny metal, Delicious. but a Spanish man of war packed with scary amounts of deadly metal. The ambitious hunt turned into a rapid retreat as the revenge scurried off faster than Bonnet left his family, but not before the man of war made the sky a lot more inclusive of the periodic table, killing <laughs> and wounding half of Bonnet's men, including the Iron big man himself. After their escape, the revenge sailed towards the pirate sanctuary of Nassau, where Bonnet would get to network with his new co-workers per se, a task our gentleman pirate was well accustomed pirates, to then. just like white collar networking events the biggest criminals stood out the most and bought <laughs> himself us. making friends <laughs> with none other than edward teach himself i can right, his rather one. dark and fuse filled facial hair okay so the last guy didn't seem like that bad of a pirate he just didn't know what he was doing but it seemed like he actually had some success i was thinking maybe he would you know go out on his first mission do something really stupid and die doing something stupid but i guess he kind of faked his way into successful piracy all right, next guy. A blackbeard, if you will. That's right. Black the beard. arguably least experienced pirate in history struck up a bromance with one of the most notorious pirates of all time. While the early details of their relationship are speculative, we do know that the two captains agreed to sail together. However, with Bonnet's captaining skills being about as competent as his parenting ones, <laughs> Blackbeard quickly caught on to the man's lack of seafaring expertise and hashed up a plan. Did he ever go all back right, home? so just hang out in ye quarters here and let me worry about the captaining. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I kind of feel like a lazy prisoner though no no think of it as an uh, apprenticeship you're <laughs> gonna be learning the most important part about being a pirate yarg low risk plundering tactics uh yarg spot on matey Dying and you can learn with uh with this M Monopoly? Monopoly. Uh, there be no better way to learn theft than capitalism matey uh, okay <laughs> and should i also start sticking lit fuses in my hair what oh shit <laughs> wow that could have been bad i swear what? they have a mind of their own they do. Anyway, to work with ye. Pirating be tough work, fit for only the strongest men. Sir, you're uh missing ice cream time. You better have saved pistachio. Blackbeard persuaded pistachio Bonnet to give up command of his. You guys ever actually finished Monopoly games? Like I feel like every you quit. Someone quits well before it, and a lot of people don't even play it right. But you know. We have a board game based on capitalism. Isn't that crazy? Ship and become <laughs> just a measly passenger aboard it. A change that was definitely a relief for Bonnet's crew. The revenge found a good deal of success under Blackbeard. All whilst Bonnet kind of just hung around awkwardly like an engineer in. Why not? Well, pick a social setting. Day after day, Bonnet's command felt more artificial than a Call of Duty code of conduct. But he felt past <laughs> the point of no return in his pirate life. All right, is it still fight. super? Is it still uh, super um, toxic? Uh, I don't play much of the multiplayer other than zombies. And I feel like that community is actually pretty good. Like they're actually pretty, pretty cool, like pretty chill that like zombie ones. But I'm assuming like Warzone and just traditional multiplayer stuff might be super toxic. I don't know. I was I was great. And they're like 360 days. But man, y'all passed me up. I did in some crewmen that he was tired of it and would gladly leave it all behind to live life anew in Spain or Portugal. A few weeks later, according to some versions of the story, Blackbeard would get a new flagship and separate from Bonnet after reinstating him as captain. I always thought that was the coolest name. Heard about that? The Queen's Anne's Story. Blackbeard would... Queen Anne's Revenge. I always thought that was... 
That was such a good name. Such a good name, man. Get a new flagship and separate from Bonnet after reinstating him as captain. Sailing through the Bay of Honduras, Bonnet and his men soon found themselves face to face with a new prize. A massive 400 ton, 26 cannon merchantman, the Protestant Caesar. A score too attractive for Bonnet to let like slip by. Bonnet. Having much Boss more combat fight. experience than his run in with the Man of War the year prior, Bonnet closed the distance, cut behind his prey stern, and opened fire. Bonnet lost. By the way, a lot of the, the uh, like, I guess you would say like tracking down and fights of of uh of pirate ships could actually take a long time like weeks like weeks because you'd be traveling at like very very uh consistent speeds like with each other and they would have to do things like lighten your ship and you'd like throw stuff off board and stuff but it could take days and days of tracking and you just you know a few feet maybe you get closer every day there and then the actual like the actual like capsize or not capsize but like um Breaking down a ship or like, uh, you know, making it so they can't sail anymore, take down the sails or something like that, like incapacitate it could take that long, too. Right. It wasn't probably as enigmatic and OK and as exciting as you see in Black Flag or uh, you know, pirate games. But sorry, sometimes history could be less exciting that way. It's not a video game. <laughs> Cannon fight and retreated into the night with his timbers thoroughly shivered, leaving his crew to That's grow funny. ever more resentful towards their gentleman captain who just couldn't seem to catch a break. After making port, they just so happened to run into Big Daddy again, who proposed Bonnet be replaced by a new captain named Richards, a proposal Bonnet's crew wasted no time money? in accepting. Having once again lost command, Bonnet was back to being a puppet, challenging Elmo's record for the longest time <laughs> spent with a hand up their ass. Fast oh, forwarding a little bit because believe it or not, there are other pirates I want to talk about. 18, Both okay. Blackbeard and Bonnet decided to surrender themselves for a pardon, well, the latter that. taking a small boat to a town in North Carolina to do so. In 1717, King George I was getting real fed up with the amount of swashbuckling and debootification plaguing the high seas. So, being the buzzkill that he was, he issued a proclamation that provided any pirate who surrendered themselves a one-time pardon for all their various piratey crimes. <laughs> Therefore, any and all pirates, scallywags, and or marauders who surrender thy Selves before the 5th of January in the year of our king 1718 shall be pardoned one time only for all their crimes. All crimes, you say? Including the most heinous. Does that include stabbing Spanish people? Uh, yes. And all other peoples as well. I don't want a pardon for the French ones. What about eating oh, stolen no. sushi with a knife and fork? The king will forgive you, but I can't say God will. <laughs> How about the smearing of copious amounts of butter on doorknobs and or floors to make people sticky? That's... That's not a crime. That's just weird. But what if... Now here's an example of said proclamation in action, as I will now pardon myself for the murder of that little shit. Now I trust you're all done wasting my time. Ah, you said you only get one pardon. What? Now, is it? <laughs> That's great. It shoots the guy. Weird butter fetish. I don't know. <laughs> Should make him sticky or slippery. So you can see, by the way, um, you're seeing kind of that shift and of getting away from the, uh, where, oh, I should say, of the states, right? Trying to actually do something about piracy um, because it was, it was politically pretty bad between countries, different monarchies, how they were plundering each other as wealth. They're all trying to create empires here. So you could see less and less support for that kind of thing um, happening over time. But again, it's not going to end piracy necessarily. It just means people are now going to go on their own. It's going to be more dangerous for sure, but the, the profitability is still there. There's still copious amounts of treasure shipping going across the ocean. Is it a good idea to blindly grant pardons to some of the most violent criminals in history? I don't know. Is it a good idea to pop three-year expired antacids when you have a stomach ache? Oh, no. Is it? When Bonnet returned to his ship, <laughs> pardon in hand, he found that Good Blackbeard question. had one more surprise in store for him. What? The legendary pirate was long gone, having taken with him all of the loot, as well as various weapons, oh, provisions, no. supplies, Blackbeard? and the best crewmen. At this point in his life, Bonnet was what we'd call not a happy sailor, and he was said to have developed a mortal hatred for Blackbeard. Oh, it's no. believed he initially sought He's revenge against his former ally, but he failed to chase him down and would never cross paths with him again. So instead, the man who had just gotten a pardon for piracy returned to said piracy. 
piracy. Oh, but this no. time, he had a new Used strategy. Up to jail mask card. his piracy, he would compensate the victims to make his predatory looting appear like a fair trade on paper. Therefore, it's not stealing. Money it's solves all the problems. Business. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Pleasure doing business with you. A an old cable? This is worthless. Uh-uh-uh. The value comes from your imagination. Check this out. Now, can you imagine what I could do with this? Boop. Having been the victim of a stupendous <laughs> amount of comical blunders, like, Bonnet up. had become Be a lot more violent now, even threatening to kill his own crewmen if they refused to fight at times. But okay, this, this guy's getting crazy be. now. I thought he was just this pampered wimp. And maybe he is still pretty wimpy. He can only do this because he's he's so wealthy and just pays off everything. But it actually sounds like he's getting kind of crazy. <laughs> Short-lived, as he was soon captured after a lengthy battle with pirate hunters. He Ooh. was taken to Charlestown, where he was imprisoned to await trial. But luck would strike one more time for our little gentleman pirate as he escaped captivity to begin his life on the Jail run. sucked back then. <sighs> Perfect. Or not very good. You could just leave. Oh, uh, I believe you, gentlemen, have me mistaken for another handsome devil. He, for he I am Duke Jeffrey Snickles of Worthington. How do you do? Yep, that's Steve Bonner right there. Book him, boys. <laughs> Your parrot can talk? <laughs> no, no. He just knows that one phrase. Steed was recaptured <laughs> after only four days, and despite much pleading from not only him, but also various damsels enchanted by the charms of a gentleman pirate, he was hanged at the gallows on December 10th, oh. 1718. Well, he met a bitter end. Do we, do we, I don't know, we like to salute people, the heroic people, like, in this channel when we do videos like this. I don't know. I don't know if he deserves it, but just in case... All right, Stade, I don't know if you deserve the salute, but, you know, we'll see. Maybe. He can say that he fulfilled his dream. He was kind of lame. Hanging but... out with pirates. Okay, so I had a lot more pirate stories I wanted to talk about, and I didn't really expect Bonnet to steal the spotlight more than he ever did from ships. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you'd like a, a part two. But there's still time left for one more pirate story. And for this one, what? Let's go on over to the second most iconic pirate sanctuary in history. Somalia. What do you think oh. of piracy? You think of plank walking, parrot squawking, booty gawking buccaneers. But don't let Pirates of the Caribbean deceive you. Piracy has been and always will be a thing. While it may change in shape and yeah. form, the piracy breeding conditions of poverty and low social status remain constant. And the pirates that plagued head. Yeah, you see out of like Somalia stuff out of crazy desperate um conditions, a lot of them do that. And like the danger of it of very easily being killed in it you know, showed how desperate their, their conditions were that they would actually go and, you know, try to ransom ships that are, that are, you know, crossing uh, across the Indian ocean or kidnapping people, try to ransom that. So yeah, those are, those are not going to be aristocrats <laughs> like study. Like, yeah, it's, it's the total bottom of, of, of people and their social conditions go into this stuff from 2000 to 2017 were the infamous Somali pirates. Sure, they lost sex appeal, switching out cutlasses and sloops for AKs and rusty motorboats, but it doesn't matter how- <laughs> By the way, if you know what AKs are doing, uh, remember Somalia, Ethiopia, very much part of proxy wars of um, of the Cold War. Enemies, or uh, 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 weapons coming in, American stuff coming in, uh, obviously Russian stuff, you can see with AKs. So them being in proxy wars and having regimes removed and um, all that stuff led to a crazy amount of instability here that you can say is domino effects leading to modern piracy tetanus prone a pirate vessel gets, you can never scrub out the whimsical buffoonery. Somali pirates took advantage of their 119,090,000 gumball long coastline along one of the busiest commercial trade routes on the planet to capture foreign vessels and hold them for ransom. After the Somali government collapsed in the 90s, foreign powers exploited the unregulated Somali waters for their various dumping and or yeah. fishing needs. Yeah, there is, it was exploited so bad, actually it is. I watched something, what was it from, Real Life Lore? I don't know if I did a reaction video or commentary video on it, but I think I remember watching some of Real Life Lore that talked about like the Somali pirates and yeah, how they were trying to respond to this. It was so, so poorly uh, exploited because there's international laws about like coastline, like how far out from your borders, your coastline, um, countries control, and it was repeatedly getting violated repeatedly getting violated again from sewage dumping as well as fishing which were you know uh the fishing part were extremely important uh forms of of, of commerce and uh, part of their economy uh being so limited because again war-torn territories right that that being exploited was really damaging for um the the, the population there 
Hey, what's going on out there? Um, nothing. What's that over there? This exploitation got to the point where foreign fishing in Somali waters surpassed domestic fishing, so local fishermen took it upon themselves to start defending their resources yeah. by capturing and robbing invading vessels. Seeing the potential yeah. in this practice, because it got to the point where it wasn't. I mean, at first it'd be like somebody actually trying to like you know dump stuff there or do fishing, but then it became vessels that have nothing to do with with that stuff, right? Uh, and and trying to capture them. Badly escalated into the ransoming shenanigans that we're more familiar with today. But if we learned anything from Archduke Ferdinand's driver, it's that things don't always go according to plan. And what might start off. Wait, was that France Ferdinand? If we learned anything from Archduke Ferdinand's driver, okay. it's that things don't always go according to plan. Oh, long story. I've covered so many World War One stuff. If you want to know. <laughs> Uh, about the, uh, the assassination of the Archduke, which led to World War One. And what might start off as one small mistake on paper can quickly unfold into disastrous results. Such was the case for a group of Somali pirates in 2009 who set off on a routine capture of a merchant vessel. In the cover of the night, they snuck up on their target in two skiffs and began firing their small arms to intimidate the crew and prep them for boarding. But See, a lot of these ships, though, over time, the defending ships started arming themselves too for this and having like protocol and 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 stuff for when this happens the crew being trained for you know pirates coming in you can see i've seen like training videos or uh or training videos or like uh what would you call them like like them doing exercises you can watch them um on youtube they're kind of interesting Something was different about this attack. This merchant ship wasn't behaving how it was supposed to. Instead of maneuvering in an attempt to shake off the attacking pirates, it started heading towards them to respond. This was probably due to the fact that this was not a vulnerable cargo ship. This was the Somme, the French command ship for all naval forces in the Indian Ocean. <laughs> Literal battleship. <Whoa. laughs> Didn't see you there. They're like sweet. In the darkness of the night, the pirates Gosh. mistook the silhouette of the Somme to be a civilian merchant vessel. So it started off as a routine assault, quickly turned into a hasty escape for their lives as the you French around, you find out, pursued. Right? The skiff split up, forcing the Somme to pursue one of them for an hour before they finally surrendered and were arrested. You can probably imagine the French crew got a good laugh out of this. I mean, Somali pirates and glorified canoes attacking a warship in the middle of the night was probably the stupidest thing to ever happen to them. Until six months later, when it happened again. <laughs> again? Again. <laughs> you guys. I mean, like it just what? shows how des- Oh my gosh, how desperate they were. How bold they were to actually want to go out and do that. Like, knowing now <laughs> there's battleships and stuff. Holy crap. What would lead you? Think about what would lead you to do these- Partial suicide mission. Fine person like with a bow and arrow, the pirates kept hitting the wrong target. Again, accidentally attacking the French warship in the night before they realized their mistake. But as we all know, blind people are very easy to tackle. So while they tried what? to run, the Somme gave chase and promptly captured them. Now, you're probably waiting for me to say this happened yet a third time, and you'd be wrong. This has happened like dozens of oh times, and not just with this ship, mind you. I found stories of pirates attacking warships from not only France, the risk but of from attacking Spain, night, right? America, the Netherlands, Kenya, and so on. Now, accidentally wow. attacking a military tanker you thought was a cargo ship is a little understandable, but accidentally attacking a Florial class frigate sporting what is clearly a 100 millimeter ticket to the afterlife is a conversation I really wish I could have overheard. Uh, are we sure this is a cargo ship? Yeah, look, you can see the containers right there. Uh, what about that long angled tube pointed precariously outward <laughs> as if in an aiming fashion? Oh, the artillery well, that's cannon. obviously a pool noodle. Pool <laughs> noodle. What ship has a 30 foot long pool noodle sticking outside of a Party big ship. box? I don't know, Dan, a water park supply ship for fat Americans? Just fucking grab the <laughs> AK and American. steal some floaties. Again, in 2009, Somali pirates mistakenly attacked the French frigate, uh, Nive, assuming it was a merchant Nivels. vessel. But to be Nivels. fair, this time the French were being a little devious. They had positioned themselves in the sun to try to lure the pirates in before capturing they all wanted a of them. Fight. So I guess if the sun was truly They're shining in all Apollo's hunting. glory that day, I can kind of buy a few dudes in a little boat trekking through the waves of an open ocean, not making out a warship until the last second. But there's really no excuse for the time in 2006 where Somali pirates were faced with not one, but two U.S. Navy warships and still decided to fight this is what you have when you have that combination of desperation but then you don't have the means and resources like study did the earlier pirate right where you're just like so limited in what you can do and so desperate 
obviously you're going to be a really bad pirate. American destroyer, the USS Gonzales, was on an anti-piracy patrol when it spotted what looked like a pirate mothership on the horizon. It was joined by the missile cruiser, the USS Cape St. George, who both trailed the oblivious pirates until dawn. They then sent boarding well, the teams Americans and inflatable boats with to this, investigate. But once the Somali buccaneers noticed them approaching, they decided to open fire on the boarding parties oh, from geez. nearly point-blank range. The Americans returned fire as they retreated, but this was only the tip of the batshit insane iceberg that oh, was no. these pirates' decision-making skills, now as what? they then decided to shoot their AKs and RPGs at the American destroyer do and thing. missile cruiser. Hey, so this is That's a destroyer, do a right? Correct. Okay, these ships are meant to withstand, like, torpedoes and rockets, okay? Not AKs at a distance. Short for torpedo boat destroyer. Cruiser. Hey, so this is a destroyer, right? Correct. Short for torpedo boat destroyer, actually. They were invented to specialize in destroying specifically smaller vessels. Oh, like yeah. Us. Anyway, <laughs> fulfilling its ancient duty, the American destroyer made short work of this battle, igniting a skiff in American hellfire when its tracer rounds hit a fuel drum. This seemed to be just the stimulant the other pirates' prefrontal cortexes needed to finally engage, as they then decided to surrender after leaving just a few scratches on the warships. It's really hard to imagine what the, you know, game plan was for these Somali pirates. Maybe they thought they could intimidate and confuse the Americans for just long enough to make a quick escape, or maybe they were looking to commit suicide in a way that was most expensive for American oh, taxpayers. Man. But perhaps their full plan hasn't been realized just yet. While 12 lead captures and one kill were tallied, you know, a Somali pirate sad. spokesman said that 27 that pirates was a had good, gone out. That was a good South Park, actually. It actually showed it actually showed the plight of like Somali pirates because Cartman's like, oh, there's real pirates around. Let's go join them. And then you find out like these guys, they're like, no, we hate being pirates. It sucks. It's scary. And we're desperate. And we think we're going to die every time to see. So my theory is that the remaining 14 had snuck aboard the American ships, slowly integrated uh -oh. into the military industrial complex, okay. and have been creeping their way up through government <laughs> ranks so that one Where day they, they could maybe, just maybe, have enough power to reinstate Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, the one and only King of the Pirates. Godspeed, Somalia. Wacky <laughs> Pirates. 12 out of 10 stars. <laughs> All right. Final thoughts. All right, then. Do you want to be a pirate? And if you did, what era would you want to be in? The modern era or the older times? They both sound terrible to me. Well, so hopefully, hopefully I was able to get you guys a little bit of pirate history. Um, snuck in there with another great uh, Blue Jay video. This was a lot of fun. Thanks to everybody that's been recommending it. Again, uh, if you're still with me here, go vote in Historical March Madness. The link is going to be down below. And follow through when new rounds come out. And uh, may your candidate win. All right, we'll see you all next time.